Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CPP Nuts video series on C++ and this topic is about operator overloading but this operator which is called array subscript operator. So if you're new to the operator overloading, please go ahead and watch my previous videos which is about overloading this binary operators like A plus B and unary operators like plus A and minus A and all. So if you know what is operator overloading, it will be very helpful to understand this straight away. So let's go for the points here. So the first point is array subscript operator can be used to check out of bound cases. Yes, because we can explicitly check whether we are going to access array which doesn't exist. I mean, if you are accessing array of zero, then whether this exists or not, like your array has one element or not, or maybe you are accessing array of 100 but maybe your array is not that big so this value is not correct value for that and you can give the error at this time otherwise it is not possible in our c and c plus plus program and the second thing is array subscript operator cannot be friend function and others too i mean others too means this arrow operator this round bracket and this assignment operator we cannot overload these operators using friend function i mean you can create any function outside your class and declare that function as friend in your class and start using that, but not these overloaded function means this one, this one, this one, and this one. So this collectively four operators cannot be overloaded using friends. It means you have to create these operator functions inside your classes. It means it should be a non static member functions. Okay, so it should be a static, sorry, it should be a non-static member function and it should be your class member function, which is equal. I mean, you say either way, it doesn't matter. So these are the two points and let's have the requirement. So if you know what is requirement, it will be cool for you. So we have 2D plane X and Y and we have these points here and there. So our requirement is you want to store these points in some data structure so you can create a class called point and you may have p1 and inside that one and two will be your x and this will be your y so you can have so many points like that okay and this is what we want i mean to get this x and y we will overload this subscript operator so let's go ahead and see how we'll do that so we will have one class name point and there you can have one array which will be like this so you have two elements in the array so zeroth location will be x and first location will be y so let me just give you in the comment so in this array zero will be pointing at x and y will be pointing at i mean one will be pointing at y so that's correct now create this constructor and initialize integer x integer y and then we can initialize it like arr no no not like this we will use it like arr of zero will be your x and arr of one will be your y okay so constructor is like this we will need one print function so let's create that quickly y arr of one and endl let's quickly create some points p1 good to go and if we will not have anything here it should be zero and zero so let's initialize them with three comma four and if we will print p1 dot print let's check the output here so our output is x is 3 and y is 4. It's perfect. So till now we have not used any operator overloading. Let's suppose you want to do something like this. Like P1's 0 position, you want to initialize maybe 7. And P1's first position, and you want to initialize something else. Maybe 4, which is already 4. So let's make it 8. Okay. So if you will compile this, this is not going to work. It will tell you that point does not provide subscript operator. 
So we have to provide it. So let's go ahead and do that. So the syntax would be like this. Integer ref operator subscript operator round bracket and you will get one integer position inside this. So this is the syntax of your subscript operator overloading. You will return integer reference. The, the point is you will be returning the reference value here so that someone can change that using assigning it with some another value. So if you're not returning the reference, you'll be returning some temporary object or value. And if you're updating that, your original object will not update. That's the only reason we have to return this reference here. Okay. So you will understand once I will write the code. If position is equal to equal to zero, we will return array of zero. And else if position is equal to equal to one, in that case, we will return array of one. In another else case, what we will do, we'll print something like out of bound case. So from here, we can just simply exit the code because we cannot process this code anymore. Okay. So if this is the situation like if it is not zero and not one, in that case, what we'll do, we'll just print one message and we'll exit from this program. So let's quickly compile this again and build successful. And the output is again, okay, yeah, we didn't print that P1 now. P1 dot print after change, it should be different. See, now it is seven and eight. Okay, so this is quite logical. But let's suppose after this, you are trying to do something like this. You're trying to access the second one and want to initialize with 10 or something. So let's see what it will do. We will compile it. See, it executed the first one, second one, and now it is telling that out of bound case and we will exit from that program. So if you are doing anything further after this, like suppose printing this P1, that won't work. Okay, because we are exiting from here only. Let's compile that. See, this one is not printed. Okay, so this was about overloading the subscript operator. So thanks for watching. And if you have any doubts, please comment. I'll be very happy to help you in that case. And I'll see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.